we are here in Photokina 2016 with Dara from SanDisk. Hello. And uh, what I wanted to ask you is basically what are you showing here at the show? Absolutely. And uh, thanks for stopping by. We have obviously the world's biggest SD card. So that's our big announcement for this year, our one terabyte card. Um, you wonder why we're doing that? It's because we can. So SanDisk have always pushed the boundaries. We have kind of a legacy of innovation. And when we create memory, we're enabling the next generation, generally of cameras and content creation devices. So when you kind of look back historically, in 2000, we released a 64 megabyte card. In 2010, we released a 64 gigabyte card. And the things that brought that forward were primarily HD, which would have come out around that time. So people were like, you'll never need that content. HD comes along, you start filling up your cards. Last Photokina, we released our 512 gigabyte card, which was the world's biggest back then. And 4K was the real driver for that. And you can see that coming through this year. So now you've got every camera, except for maybe one, has 4K enabled. So. And not only that, beyond that, people are talking about 6K and 8K. So you see some of the very high-end cameras going to that. So what we create is facilitating that because the file size is double, triple, quadruple. And when you thought 64 is enough, when you thought 512 was enough, suddenly it's not. So what we've done is create the engineering prototype. So this card, we don't have release dates, pricing, or specifications as yet. It's an SDXC card. Um, so with one terabyte still in the same family of SDXC. So we can show you the card working if you like. So I can show you here on the PC just so you know this is the big reveal. This is the one terabyte card actually in the machine here. Um, I can pull it up here in Explorer and just show you that I can actually play back a file from it. So just so you know it's not made of chocolate. So this is uh, some video content from our Extreme team. And this is kind of one thing that a, a large capacity card is good for. So stop motion animation where you're leaving something in place for a long time, don't want to have to keep changing out the cards. So I just kill that video there and I can just show you the, um, the properties of the card, just so you know that it is actually existent and all kosher. <laughs> so, uh, and now I'll take it out and you can actually touch the card. So there it is the world's largest SD card from SanDisk. Now, so moving on from that, obviously this works in your, your DSLR cameras. For everybody else who's using maybe a smaller form factor camera, GoPros, the new Karma came out yesterday, you've got the DJ Phantoms, they're enabling 4K resolution in the air. And the last thing you want to be doing is pulling your drone out of the air before you finish shooting. So the 256 card we released at IFA about two weeks ago, we have the Ultra Edition, which is basically aimed at HD users, and we've an Extreme Edition, which is shipping probably in about November time frame. That's aimed at 4K users. So the Extreme series we have has higher write speed. So it's U3, so it'll do 30 megabytes per second writes. So not only for those, you have as well capacities on phones, um, are now enabling you with Android, with Android Marshmallow, you can integrate this into your actual phone storage. So it becomes unified memory. Um, so with our Extreme card, you can actually run your apps off the card, which is a really cool kind of feature. And when you expand kind of beyond that, you wonder, well, what else can you do? So for Android, we obviously have micro SD. Then we have our dual drive products, because if you run out of memory on the, the actual device itself, you can transfer it via the micro SD onto your computer or just take it with you and always have a permanent backup. If you're taking photos, it's really great to have something like that. Um, it's available on up to 128 gigabytes. If um, 128 gig inside, yeah. So they're available now, it's USB 3 on one side. Um, if you are an iPhone and an Android user, we have our wireless stick, our Connect. So you literally switch it on. It generates its own Wi-Fi hotspot and you can connect to this with your iPhone or your Android phone. You can stream three separate movies to three separate devices. So kids in the back of the car, uh, your wife's in the front seat, they can all watch their own different, no fighting. It's good, it solves fighting. Eight hours battery life, or you just keep it charged in the car in the cigarette lighter adapter. 
Um, then obviously for the iPhone user, there's the iXpand. So our aim is to bring USB to the mobile device. And if I just plug it into my phone here, I'll just bring it up there. So there's an app that goes with this. And it allows you, the cool feature we've added in now um, is that you can actually record directly onto this. So the big problem is that you're at somebody's birthday party, your dog's going crazy and learn how to fly and speak Japanese and you're like, I gotta get this on video and out of storage. So this means you don't have to go delete, delete, delete and pick which one of your children you don't like that much that you want to delete their photos. And it means you can actually start taking pictures directly to the drive and also video directly to the drive, which is a, is a lifesaver. So it's a really cool feature. Otherwise, you can do regular things like simply just play back video content on the plane. So when I'm flying home today to Ireland on my iPad, I can actually watch my own videos without having to transfer them across. Um, beyond that, I think what's really big this year and what we're seeing a real growth in is Type-C. So last year we brought out the world's first USB Type-C. There were only two hosts that we could actually get it to work on, the MacBook and the Chromebook. This year, they're innumerable. So at IFA, we had everybody coming in with the new Huawei P95, P90, and the Honor phones. Even the mid-range phones now have Type-C, which is a big change. So you either have the regular Type-C, basically like a bog standard USB drive, or you have the dual drive option again, Type-C on one side, and USB 3.0 and the other, up to 128 gigs. So they're really worth investing in as a backup. You can do auto backup of your content, same, watch movies, transfer content. So Type-C is really, I think, something to watch for this year. When it comes then to what do you do with this content? So you've got your GoPro, you've got your DSLR footage, you want to transfer it onto your PC, you need a secure offline backup. So that's where our portable SSDs come into it. So if you take a regular hard drive, it's about 100 megabytes a second transfer speed. So that's a good option if you want big capacity. But if you're in the field, you want something to be shockproof and resistant. So products like these, shockproof, not a problem. You don't worry, you can throw this up in the air, you can get it run over, it's gonna be okay. Um, so what I can do is I can show you the speeds. What I've done is I've created a small little drive in the RAM of the PC, so I'm not hitting any bottlenecks. So here we go, the stream 500 and 900. And okay, so this is the memory of the machine. Let's knock this out now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag, I delete that, a four gig file from the Extreme 500 to the machine and give you a speed. So we'll just move the speed window now. So you're getting very close to 400 megabytes a second, which is pretty impressive. And if you think that's impressive, <laughs> the 900, if I can do it quickly enough, is going close to 700 megabytes per second. Now the, de the device is rated to go up to 850. So it depends on whether the host is fast enough because USB-C is quite new. So if you've got a desktop machine, it's much easier to hit the speeds. So make sure, always make sure your firmware of your Type-C port is up to date, make sure your BIOS is up to date to get the, the highest speeds. Um, it's still to date the world's fastest portable SSD. So you don't need a power supply with that. Um, really fast. And that's a very quick roundup of all the new products. If there's anything else you want to know about, fire away. You're very welcome.